I've talked about this specific curve a number of times in these videos. It's called the Strybeck curve, and it really tells you a lot about what you need to know about lubrication. For example, there are three different types of lubrication, boundary, mixed, and hydrodynamic lubrication. We've broken those down separately in other videos. But how exactly do we get to this chart? Let's build it up piece by piece from some building blocks that we have from high school physics. So if I have just a simple system where I have a block on the ground and I'm trying to move the block, let's think about all the forces that go into moving it. So firstly, there's the actual force of gravity, right? This is the weight of the block, which is mass times gravity. Now this gives us the normal force. And the reason why that's really important is because the friction exerted between the block and the ground as it moves is a force which is equal to a coefficient of friction determined by the two surfaces as well as n, the normal force. If I can overcome that force, then the block moves. All right, so now let's go back to our force diagram. How can I reduce the amount of friction? So reducing friction is always desirable. How can I reduce it? Well, there's really only one way to do it because the normal force is already determined. It's mass times gravity. And without changing the weight of the block, the only thing that we can do fundamentally is to change the coefficient of friction. As a result, I need to change something about the materials. And if we have, let's say, for example, two actual surfaces that are in contact with each other, all I can do is change the surface materials. But we have other tricks up our sleeve. So let's say, for example, I wanted to slide a block across the ground. The easiest way to do it is to grease up or to lubricate the surface. We get this intuitively. Slippery surfaces are those which are wet and smooth at the same time. So what we need to do is we need to put a lubricant film on the ground. Now, this can be any kind of fluid. Obviously, oil-based ones tend to be slicker and work better. But what is exactly that fluid doing? So at very, very low speeds, what am I doing? I'm actually just pushing the block. And the lubricant is not getting between the block and the surface. So the coefficient of friction is still the same coefficient of friction which is determined between the block as well as the ground. If I continue to push it faster, again, the frictional force is dictated by the coefficient of friction and the normal force, so it stays relatively constant. Now, if I increase speed further, what is gonna happen? I'm gonna get what we call hydrodynamic lift. If I start to push this block much faster, it's going to rise up into the liquid lubricant, and what's that gonna do? It's going to dramatically drop the coefficient of friction. This is a little bit similar to, say, a boat in the water. As it gets faster, it starts to rise up out of the water, and at really high speeds, we actually reduce the amount of contact between the boat surface as well as the water. But now what's going to happen? As I get faster and faster still, now the friction is going to steadily increase. Going back to our boat analogy, now the faster we go, the more the water is going to impede our movement. And that's why the Strybeck curve comes back up again. And so that's how you build out these three different components of friction. We have the boundary, where it's metal on metal. We have the mixed, in which case we're starting to rise up into that lubricant film. And we have a coefficient of friction that dramatically drops. And finally, we have hydrodynamic, where we're riding up on that fluid.